victory. If I have seen it, I think it's going to do very, very well. President Trump and the GOP poised to deliver on a big promise. Americans deserve a new tax code for a new era of American prosperity. We want to give you, the American people, a giant tax cut for Christmas. And when I say giant, I mean giant. Democrats powerless to stop it. What's there for the middle class is written in disappearing ink. So is the tax cut a done deal? What will it mean for the economy and you? And does Trump's biggest victory yet spell trouble or guarantee survival for Republicans in Congress? And Alabama has been at a crossroads. Democrat Doug Jones defeats Roy Moore in Alabama, a seismic wake-up call for the GOP as their Senate majority shrinks. He tried. I want to support the person running. Uh, we need the seat. We'd like to have the seat. But did Republicans dodge a bullet by keeping Roy Moore out of the Senate? What will this mean for Steve Bannon's war on the GOP establishment? Whose side will Trump take? Big questions this week for Senate Republican Whip John Cornyn, the Democrat leading their campaign to take back the Senate, Chris Van Hollen, and our powerhouse roundtable. We'll break down the politics, smoke out the spin, the facts that matter this week. From ABC News, it's This Week. Here now, Chief Anchor George Stephanopoulos. Good morning. As we head into the holidays, it sure looks like President Trump and the GOP will get what they want for Christmas. The votes lined up for the largest tax cut in years and Trump's biggest legislative victory yet. So what will it really mean for the economy and the middle class? That may take years to determine, and we're going to have two of America's most prominent economists to analyze that impact ahead. For now, passing the tax plan, a political boost the Republicans need after their worst political loss of the year in Alabama. But will it look like a win one year from now? This is where it all began. This time last year, Donald Trump was thanking Alabama voters on his victory tour. Not this week. Despite the president's late push for the GOP candidate. Get out and vote for Roy Moore. Do it, do it. Moore's baggage was just too heavy. As the leader of the party, I would have liked to have had the seat. And Trump's cloud a little light. The president won Alabama by 28 points. Now his approval rating has dropped below 50 in the reddest of red states. And he's caught in the crossfire of a GOP civil war with his former strategist Steve Bannon. To Mitch McConnell and Senator Shelby, there's a special place in hell <laughs> for Republicans who should know better. Waging an all-out assault on the Republican leaders in Congress who the president needs to work with every day. For Democrats, Tuesday, the best day of 2017. We have come so far and the people of Alabama have, have spoken. Young people, African Americans, women energized by Trump and the Me Too movement made Doug Jones the first Democratic senator from Alabama in 25 years and gave Democrats hope that taking back the Senate just might be possible. But the midterm map favors Republicans. Democrats defending 24 seats, 10 from states that went to Trump last year. Only eight Republican seats are up for re-election, and only Dean Heller of Nevada is running in a state won by Clinton. And the GOP is betting that their new tax bill is the insurance policy they need. Jobs are going to come pouring back into this country, which we need very much. Convinced that defeat on the tax bill would doom them in 2018, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and the president have pulled out all the stops, claiming a promise kept to the middle class. Everybody's going to benefit, but I think the greatest benefit is going to be for jobs and for the middle class. But independent analysts show the big winners from the bill are corporations and the wealthy. Polls show that less than a third of the country supports it, one of the most unpopular bills in years, which has Democrats hoping that the legislative defeat they expect this week will bring political victory come November. I think they're in a lose-lose situation. If they don't pass the bill, they lose with their paymasters. If they do pass the bill, they lose with the American people. Let's bring that to the number two Republican in the Senate, GOP Whip John Cornyn of Texas. Senator Cornyn, thank you for joining us this morning. You just heard Leader Pelosi right there, lose-lose for the Republicans. Your response? Uh, this is good news for the American people. Uh, we're going to get the economy roaring back again and uh, improve pay and uh, increase jobs and make America more competitive in the global economy as well as simplifying the tax code and giving everybody in every tax bracket a tax cut. So this is good news any way, uh, any way you cut it. Is this a done deal? Do you have the votes even if Senator McCain does not, is not able to vote this week? Well, I won't speculate on Senator McCain's uh, health. Uh, we hope he comes back, but uh, I'm confident we'll pass this bill uh, probably on Tuesday.
so you, you think you think you have the votes right now. There's a lot more scrutiny of the bill, which was just released on Friday in these final hours, including uh, an article in the International Business Times, which just came out yesterday, showing that a last-minute tax break, which was not included in either the House or the Senate provision, could bring millions of dollars to President Trump and other Republicans who get a lot of money from the real estate income through LLCs. Our next guest, Senator Chris Van Hollen, has responded to that, saying that slipping in a last-minute provision that could give even more of a windfall to people like President Trump Trump and some Republicans in Congress is unconscionable. It's not too late for my colleagues to do the right thing. Will you remove that provision? Well, our Democratic colleagues simply uh, simply didn't refuse to participate in the process. We probably could have made it better if they had, uh, but we were determined to get this uh, job done, to t cut taxes, to reform the tax code for the first time in 30 years. This will benefit hardworking American families, people in the lower uh, income tax brackets, and a Everybody in every tax bracket will see a tax cut. So picking out one piece in a thousand page bill and saying, well, this is going to benefit somebody, I just think uh, takes the whole bill out of context. Well, but except that this provision wasn't included either the House or the Senate bill, it apparently was added at the last minute. Why was that done? Why was it necessary to include that provision? Well, we were working very hard. It was a very intense process. As I said, the Democrats didn't refuse to participate. And uh, we, what we've tried to do is cobble together the votes we needed to get this bill passed at the same time, at the same time maintaining the integrity of the largest tax cuts we're going to be seeing in, uh, since 1986. So is that how you got Senator Corker with this provision? Well, the particular provision you're talking about, honestly, is just one piece of a thousand page bill, which is going to grow the American economy. And what we are seeing is that uh, American corporations and businesses are not competitive in the global economy because we have the highest tax rate in the industrialized world. All we did is adopt ideas that uh, people like Barack Obama and uh, other Democrats have proposed when it comes to the business tax rates and should try to get our businesses more competitive to increase take-home pay and to grow the number of jobs available for working class families. I don't think they propose that, propose that provision. Uh, but meanwhile, the, the Democrats are also warning that this is going to trigger uh, a mandatory cut in many government programs, including a $25 billion cut in Medicare. Leader Pelosi has written a letter uh, to the Senate and House leaders in the Republican Party saying, given the lack of bipartisanship to date in your effort to provide massive tax cuts to the wealthy at the expense of the middle class while adding $1.5 trillion to the deficit, it will be your responsibility to deal with the consequences. She's essentially saying you won't get any Democratic votes to waive those cuts. So $25 billion in Medicare cuts are coming. Can you prevent that on your own? Well, that's just a false statement. We don't touch Medicare at all. We don't touch any of the entitlement programs in this bill. And so for uh, Ms. Pelosi to make that statement, uh, it's just uh, fabricated. But this, but, this, but this proposal, the tax bill, because it increases the deficit, does trigger these pay-go provisions, which will mandate a $25 billion cut in Medicare unless you have the votes to waive it. Do you have the votes to waive it? We will deal with that uh, later this week. Uh, and w I believe uh, we will protect Medicare. And um, if Ms. Pelosi and her party will join us, uh, that'll be a done deal. The Democrats say they're not going to join. And that leads to the question about Senator Susan Collins. This was one of her conditions for passing the bill, along with the passage of the Alexander Murray back to, uh, bill to stabilize the health insurance markets. Do you have her vote, even if those provisions are not guaranteed? Well, Senator Collins has been very constructive throughout this process, and she has vastly improved this bill by protecting uh, taxpayers in the states with their state and local tax deduction, a $10,000 cap which benefits everybody. And she has been a champion of trying to stabilize the affordable care markets and to bring premiums down. And we will all join her in that effort to bring those premiums down and stabilize the market. And we will uh, not trigger a cut in Medicare. We will deal with that uh, this week. And uh, again, I invite our Democratic friends to join us in protecting Medicare. It looks like the Democrats are not going to be there on the tax bill. And back in 2010, when Republicans did not vote along with Obamacare, you warned the Democrats against passing the Obamacare on a party line vote in reconciliation. Let's take a look. Well, if they try to jam it through as they have uh, so far with strictly along partisan lines, then I think uh, November 2010 will be a very good uh, uh, month for us. Uh, I think we will gain a lot more seats. Are you concerned that history might repeat itself in 2018? 
Well, we did pick up seven seats, as I recall, in 2010, following the jamming through of Obamacare. But this was done through the regular legislative process, mark up in the Finance Committee and on the floor of the United States Senate. As I said, our Democratic colleagues had every chance to participate and simply refused. And it's not too late for them to join us in passing this massive tax cut and tax reform bill, which will help awaken the uh, sleeping giant of the American economy. They can do that on Tuesday, and I hope some of them will. It doesn't appear that any of them will, but they, and they are banking on the fact that they think this is going to help them in 2018. Also looking to those results on Tuesday out of Alabama, uh, where Roy Moore, the Republican candidate, lost. Of course, you were not a fan of Roy Moore in that campaign. Do you think the GOP dodged a bullet with that loss? Well, I think the explanation for Alabama was we had a flawed candidate who won the Republican primary and who couldn't win the general election. That's really not a new lesson. That's an old lesson uh, remembered or uh, demonstrated once again. So what we need to do is, uh, my party needs to do, is make sure we nominate electable candidates, good candidates, who can win general elections. I don't think the lesson of Alabama is any more complex than that. Flawed candidate couldn't win the general election. Does that mean that Steve Bannon has to back off? Uh, Mr. Bannon can do whatever he sees fit. It's a free country, but uh, I don't think uh, his track record, particularly now in uh, losing Alabama, one of the reddest states in the country, uh, particularly commends him for uh, his expertise. One of the other X factors heading into 2018, of course, is the Russia investigation led by special counsel Robert Mueller. You've been pretty active on Twitter over the weekend responding to the former attorney general, uh, Eric Holder. In one of your tweets, you said that Mueller needs to clean house of partisans. Uh, and then you were asked by, in another tweet, will you accept the findings of the Mueller probe as legitimate by Greg Sargent of the Washington Post? Uh, you say that makes sense to me to wait and see what they are first. That sounds like you're saying that you're going to believe that Mueller's uh, conclusions are legitimate only if you like them. Well, no, that's not true. Uh, I have a lot of uh, admiration and respect for Director Mueller, but I would think he would want to eliminate challenges to the integrity of his investigation by eliminating agents who have taken positions either in uh, text messages or through their political activity that undermine the integrity well, those people of, have been the, taken of off the results the of the investigation. So I'd, I think he would should want to do that because not only is an objective investigation and justice needs to be done, the appearance of justice needs to be done, and I think uh, these conflicts of interest jeopardize the integrity of his investigation. The FBI agent who, who was engaged in those text messages, both of them have been taken off the investigation. They were taken off apparently as soon as uh, Special Counsel Mueller found out about them. And I commend him for that. He should. And uh, But there ought to be, there are others who uh, uh, he needs to make sure he vets that team. There are plenty of FBI agents and uh, prosecutors who have not been politically involved on behalf of Democrats or overtly critical of the president that um, can serve in this important investigation. So I have confidence in Director Mueller. I would just think he would be concerned about the appearance of conflicts of interest that would undermine the integrity of the uh, investigation. It appears that some of the president's allies in the Congress are starting to lay the groundwork for him to fire Robert Mueller. What would that mean if the president fired the special counsel? I've heard, I read that the president's own lawyer says that's not going to happen. I think that would be a mistake myself. Senator Cornyn, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.